My name's Stuart Moore and I'm the golf course superintendent here at the Southport Golf Club. What I want to talk about today is why do we have to renovate? Everything's looking really nice out here. Stuart, why do you have to rip the greens up every year? Well, in a nutshell, it's basically about investing in the, in the asset and the assets, these putting greens, the golf course, the tees, the fairways and all those green spaces that we have for the members to play the game as best they possibly can. We've got two different methods that we use when we're renovating golf course greens. We've got one that offers a hollow tine, in other words, it pushes a hole into the ground and actually extracts material from that surface. It pulls out soil, clay, silt, anything that's packed down really tight. What that does then is expose the surface of the putting green to allow us to put nutrients like fertiliser, water, amendments, lime, and just do a balance of the soil to make sure that for the next 12 months, it's in the best position it can be going forward. Now, there are a couple of different tools that we use here at the golf course. Uh, again, we can either go with a solid tine, which is purely just for decompaction or a hollow time so we can get those amendments down in the ground when we really do need them. Because we're doing this in spring and early summer, we want to take advantage of the ground temperature in the soil to get the best growth recovery once we've done all this disturbance to the greens. This time of year, the larvae, chewing and sucking insects, mites, flies, all those sorts of things within the green are actively looking to get into these greens because they've got lovely white food sources that would be the roots of the plant. So what we do, we go out two or three weeks in, in advance and we spray the greens with a systemic insecticide, which allows us then to obtain full recovery without these insects chewing on the regrowth that we're promoting when we close the course for that renovation process. That lasts for about 12 weeks. It's kind of like an antibiotic, if you like, it's for a human being. You guys get sick or I get sick, the doctor prescribes an antibiotic. It's in our system for some time. This insecticide will go into the ground. Anything that comes in and lays its eggs, starts to hibernate, starts to get active within the green while I'm trying to get it to regrow from our renovation process. It knocks him on the head and just removes one element that you know could cause the greens to come back a bit slower than what I would really like for. What we've got here are the two different varieties of tining that we can do on the golf course when we actually close for renovation time. Now in October when we close for a week, we use a hollow tine. You can see it's approximately five eighths in diameter. It's hollow. What this does is connect it to a machine that's about two metres wide and it can punch holes into the green and physically pull material out, material that you don't want in there. A build-up of thatch, vegetative material, uh, organic material that's accumulated over that 12-month period, we don't want it in the green because it compromises the putting surface. It makes it soft, it causes disease, water can't get down to the root zone, and of course, valuable oxygen from the atmosphere finds it very difficult to get into that putting surface. In January or February, what we do is a solid time. So we don't open up the profile of the soil like we would in October. We use a, a tine that's solid, you can't see through that. It's about eight millimetres thick and it simply punches holes down through the surface. And what that does is help with the decompaction. In other words, loosening up that putting surface a little bit, combined with the rolled and a little bit of a dust, the members don't even know we've done it and come back two days later, you now we're back to normal and it's an early February process and no one even knows really we've been there. So when you combine those two together, you end up with a nice, hard, firm surface and hopefully get the best result for you guys out here when you're playing golf each day. You can have a look at this plug. I'll pull this plug out. Basically, it shows you underneath the putting surface what we're trying to do. In other words, trying to make sure that where the roots are growing, they're in that optimum environment. And if they are, then the putting surface is always going to be at its optimum. So what I've done is taken a plug out with our core sampling machine. If you can imagine this being a lot smaller and coming out of this tine, you can imagine all this soil, this organic material up in here, what we want to do is in, in fact reduce the amount of soft material from here, in other words the top of the, the, the soil itself, to the top of the putting green where you guys are playing golf. If we can minimise this to be quite firm and hard, what we're going to do is actually increase all of these nice roots, these white roots. The deeper they go down, the stronger that plant's going to be. Beautiful oxygen can get down into this hole, which we've spoken about. Water, nutrients, and of course, amendments that we need depending on the soil test that we get back from the labs. Before any of this process is done, soil tests are taken out of the greens at the end of a fertilizer cycle. So the lab then receives all these soil tests. They come back and let me know how I'm traveling. I can buy the right amendments. So when I do, I know exactly what that soil is going to need. And in two or three weeks time, the greens will respond knowing they've got the goodness in the ground and again we get the greens back quickly as we possibly can for the membership.